Coming up in ViewCast, these shocking predators have a unique way of luring their prey. See electric eels in action. Watch how a supercomputer uncovers the mysteries of the hummingbird. And we'll take you here for some baseball cheer. Hi, I'm Amy Wolf with ViewCast. This is the type of animal that makes people afraid to get in the water. Now Vanderbilt biologist Ken Catania is out with new research and video explaining just how these electric eels use their high voltage shocks. Put yourself in the eel's place in the Amazon where it would actually live. If they're searching for things hidden among rocks or in plants, having this ability to cause involuntary motion would be very useful in a way to reveal prey to them while they're hunting. They give off a pair of these high voltage pulses, basically what you could call a doublet. And that is the perfect stimulus to cause a massive whole body twitch. But that twitch is the cue to give away the position of the prey item to the eel, which is very sensitive to slight water movements. So it'll attack a very slight water movement. taser, essentially causing involuntary muscle contractions to freeze up the animal so it couldn't move. The eel is remotely activating the motor neuron output that activates muscles. So they're essentially reaching into the animal's nervous system with their electric charge and remotely controlling their muscles through their peripheral nervous system, which I think is pretty amazing. Want to see more cool research from Catania's lab? Go to news.vanderbilt.edu, search Ken Catania. Now more amazing science video. Have you ever watched a hummingbird and wondered, how do they move so incredibly fast? Take a look at this. Two mechanical engineers at Vanderbilt teamed up with a biologist at the University of North Carolina to create this supercomputer simulation. It shows hummingbirds' amazing flying skills are more akin to insects than birds. There's a lot more to see and learn from this. You can get the whole story on our special research page, vanderbilt.edu, search hummingbird. How did national champions celebrate the holidays? As a team, of course. Coach Tim Corbin and his wife Maggie were nice enough to let ViewCast crash the party. It's about three days worth of cooking and setting up the house, and but I love it because I only cook one time a year, and it's and it's this time. But I spend all, an entire day doing the macaroni and cheese, an entire day doing the cakes, and uh, but but it's fun. I love doing it for the boys. It's tradition that the. Uh, Losing coach from the Black and Gold World Series serves the stake to the winning team. The gold team won and I was coaching the black, so here I am. <laughs> Merry Christmas. You're here with the winning gold squad? Indeed. Except for both. Except both. I don't do much. I blow the front yard, that's about it. He puts you know. the lights out on yeah. the outside. Yeah. yeah. Anniversary that's gift. Yeah. <laughs> Every team, every boy that comes to our program feels like a son. Um, I feel like I know them like a son, I speak to them like sons, and it's just like our family with a lot of boys. What's your resolution? <laughs> There's no resolution. I just want to enjoy life, enjoy the day. Uh, we don't really have any resolutions per se. Just uh, want to enjoy this team and see how far we can take them. Oh, 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 oh,
cease. Pray you dutifully prime your mat in chime, ye ringers. May you beautifully rhyme your e time song, ye singers. Excelsis! Oh, 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 oh,